Hello, my name is Joel Christ. I'm a developer with Acona Systems, and today I'm going to do a walkthrough of some code that will illustrate how to access data from workflow association and initiation forms in Windows SharePoint Services 3.0. I'm in Microsoft Visual Studio 2005, and I'm running on a Windows Server 2003 system on which I've installed Windows SharePoint Services 3.0, the SharePoint Server 2007 SDK, and the Visual Studio 2005 extensions for the .NET Framework 3.0. And we're in a solution entitled Form Data Workflow that contains two projects. One project called Form Data Workflow implements a SharePoint sequential workflow library. And another project called Form Data ASPX Pages implements a class library that contains two ASPX pages or forms which implement a workflow association form and a workflow initiation form. Now I've gone ahead and implemented both the SharePoint sequential workflow library and the class library project here. Um, and what we're going to do today is we're going to focus on just walking through the code, specifically the code that's related to how we're accessing the data coming from the workflow association and workflow initiation forms. So we're going to start off by here in the sequential library, workflow library project, opening up the workflow outline in the workflow visual designer here. And we can see that the workflow has several different activities. It has to create task activities so that once the workflow is activated, it's going to create a task in the associated task or the specified task list. And then it's going to wait for that task to uh, be changed or completed. And once the task is completed, a code activity is going to get fired off. And the code activity is going to actually then access the data um, from the workflow association, workflow initiation forms, and write those to fields or properties. Um, on the list items that the workflow is operating on and then ultimately then the workflow will delete the task that was created up here. So if we come over here and double click on the code activity we can take a look at what we're doing when that activity runs. Um, we can see we get a reference to a SharePoint list item that the workflow is operating on or associated with and then we come down here and we get the data that represents our association form data and initiation form data and we get that off these properties here on the workflow properties object. And the way we then work with that data is we pass that data, which is in the form of an XML string, um, to our helper function, deserialize form data. And what that does is it goes ahead and deserializes that XML string and creates an instance of a form data class, um, which is a simple class that has properties on it that represent um, the different field values from the different forms. So once we have our form data objects for the association form data and initiation form data, we use them then to set the corresponding fields on the item that the SharePoint or the SharePoint list item that the workflow is working on. And if we go take a look at the deserialize form data method here, we can see that it takes a string, which is the XML string that represents um, the form data. It goes ahead then and stuffs that XML string into a memory stream, sets up an XML serializer, and then goes ahead and deserializes that XML stream into an instance of a form data object and then returns that back. Okay, so let's go take a look at how our association and initiation form data was made available to us. So I've come over here and look at the class library that provides the implementation of the association and initiation forms and specifically come into this form data pages.cs file and look at the implementation of this WF data pages class. Um, both of the classes that uh, implement the association form um, and the initiation form inherit from this base class here. And this base class provides uh, two serialization related methods. One which has the ability to populate a page from an XML string and another which has the ability to serialize a form to a string. And that's what this code then does down here. Um, so this actually gets called when uh, once the association form has been displayed to the user and, uh, and the initiation form has been displayed and the user has filled in the fields on it when they then choose to either kick off the association of the workflow with a given list or to actually kick off a workflow instance with a given list item, um, then this serialized form to string method gets called and it goes ahead and serializes the, the current state of the form out to a string and then returns that. And that's what then gets used on the other side over here um, to then determine actually what our field values were on our different forms. Okay, so let's go ahead and rebuild our solution. Okay, and it looks like that succeeded. So now we're ready to, to deploy our workflow to our Windows SharePoint Services installation. So I've gone ahead and modified the feature.xml file that Visual Studio generated for me and have added 
um, a feature block in here to describe my workflow as a feature. I've got a title and a description and also an element manifest um, node here that specifies the workflow.xml file, um, which if I go take a look at that, I've also modified that then to describe my workflow. So I've given it a name, a description, and assigned it a unique GUI. It specified where the code for the workflow lives. And here's where also where I'm specifying the association and initiation forms for the workflow. So if I come out here now to a Visual Studio 2005 command prompt, I've got a batch file uh, called install all that I've created. That if I run that, we'll deploy the workflow and it's supporting files to my Windows SharePoint services installation. Okay, so it looks like that completed successfully. Okay, now that I've successfully deployed the workflow to my SharePoint site, I can come over to the site and see if it works. So I've gone ahead and created a just simple test list here. Um, and I've added some columns to the list with names that maps the names of the fields or columns that we're working with in the workflow code, field one through field six. And if I come here on the list settings and go to the workflow settings, I can then associate my workflow with this list. So here I see under the available workflow templates, my form data access workflow. I'm going to give it a name of test. And then come down here and leave all the other settings as the default. Also leave it so the workflow can be manually started and then say next. Now at this point here, I can come in here and choose to initialize my fields with their values on my association form and say OK. And then the workflow gets associated with that list. Now if I come over here to the workflow test list, I can come in here and on this item, choose to look at the workflows and I see that I have the ability to start a new workflow of test if I go ahead and kick that off I now get displayed the initiation form and I see it comes through with the values that I initially set up on the association form so I'm going to go ahead and choose to change these and say OK and now the workflow gets started, activated. Okay, and it shows now that we have the test workflow is in progress. Now, if you remember, the first thing that the workflow did is it went out and created a new task for this item in the list. So if I go take a look at the tasks list, I see now I have an entry in here that was just created, task for item one. Status is not started. Um, if I come in here, I can choose to edit the item's properties, the task's item properties and I can set its status to completed and say OK and what that will cause to happen now is the workflow that was paused waiting for that task to be completed goes ahead and um, now runs my code activity at this point here so if we switch over to the task list or the test list here we see that it's still showing the item is in progress or the, uh, the task item is in progress, but if I refresh, I get now that it's completed. And I see that it, in fact, it went ahead and filled in the fields on my item in my list with the fields from my association form and then also from my initiation form. If we go back over to the tasks list also, we see that now the task was successfully deleted as well. That was the last activity in our workflow. So it looks like everything's working just fine. So I'll be using Microsoft Visual Studio 2005 with the extensions for .NET Framework 3.0 installed and the SharePoint Server 2007 SDK installed. We were able to create uh, two assemblies. One that was a class library that contained the implementations of a custom association and custom initiation form for the workflow and as well as custom code in the workflow that was able to then pull data from our association initiation forms and use that data to update items in our list.